Hi everyone. I decided to make an amplifier for my crystal radio. Note that I still need the earpiece, but it's much, much louder and clearer in the earpiece. No more straining to understand what's being said. I'll also be giving a lot of other useful tips for people new to playing with electronics. We start with the crystal radio circuit I showed in my How to Make a Crystal Radio video. I won't be discussing those parts here. Instead, I'll focus on the stuff we'll add. Since we're amplifying the output for the earpiece, we'll separate it from the circuit. We'll also redraw the earth ground connection a bit. The stuff for amplifying the signal will go here. And this is what the end result will look like. But don't let that frighten you. These are the parts you'll need to get. Note that the parts will likely look a little bit different, possibly with different colors. For capacitors, you need a 0.001 microfarad capacitor, two 1 microfarad capacitors, and a 10 uh, microfarad capacitor. For the 1 microfarad and 10 microfarad capacitors, you'll likely be given a choice of electrolytic or non-electrolytic capacitors. Either type is fine, but more on that later. You'll need three resistors, a 82 kilo ohm resistor, 100 kilo ohm resistor, and a 10 mega ohm resistor. You'll also need a uh, 2N4401 transistor, or an equivalent part. In my case, my local electronics store has NTE parts, and their catalog said the NTE123AP was equivalent, so that's what I have. You'll also need a 9 volt battery. To put it all together, I'm going to use this breadboard. Uh, that way I can test it before making something more permanent, should I decide to. What's a breadboard? In my How to Make a Crystal Radio video, I connected things together by twisting the wires together. But that's a pain to undo and redo. With the breadboard, you simply plug the wires of the various parts into the small holes. Whatever you plug into these five holes will be connected together. Likewise, whatever you plug into these five holes will be connected together. But something plugged into here will not be connected to something plugged into here. The same sort of thing applies to these five over here, and so on. On the edge, these five go together, as do these five, and so on. For example, on the diagram we see that these two parts are connected on this side that goes to ground. We can tell that because if we follow one part to the next, there's nothing else in between. So we put one end in each of the same set of five holes. And now these ends are connected together. But I have a lot of connections to ground. Note that there are only five holes connected together. So I'll connect the wire between these two rows, and now all the holes in those two rows are connected together. For your information, this wire is called a jumper. Now this capacitor is what's called an electrolytic capacitor, and it can't just go in in any way. This wire end has a minus sign, also known as a negative sign, marked near it on the case. That means the other wire end is positive. In the diagram, notice the plus sign drawn here. That means the positive wire of the capacitor connects at that location, and therefore the negative wire is connected to the other location, our ground row in this case. Non-electrolytic capacitors don't care which way they go. I find that if a wire is fairly flexible, it helps to hold it near the end using a pair of needle nose pliers, and then push it in a hole. I'll continue plugging things in. This small part is the transistor. It has three wires, so hopefully your transistor came with a drawing that tells you which wires are what. In the symbol, this end is called the base, so look for a B or the word base in your drawing. The end with the arrow is called the emitter, so look for an E or the word emitter in your drawing. And this end is called the collector, so look for a C or the word collector. This is the packaging that came with my transistor, and there you can see the drawing. The drawing tells me that if I hold the flat end of the transistor towards me, then the wire on the left is the emitter, see the E, the wire in the middle is the base, see the B, and the wire on the right is the collector, see the C. And here's the finished result all connected in. Uh, for the transistor the emitter needed to be connected to ground so I simply put a wire for that to plug it in. The earpiece here, the wires are fairly flimsy on the end so I simply um, connected some solid wires for that to plug that in. I did a similar thing. Here's a solid wire for connecting to the diode in the crystal radio. Here's a solid wire for the ground going to the ground in the crystal radio. For the battery negative I simply put a alligator clip like this and for the positive I did an alligator clip as well going to a solid wire and then plugging that solid wire in. Okay so I'm currently tuned into something and I'll just put the earpiece in the camera microphone so you can hear it. So as you can hear with the amplifier, it's quite loud. 
I'll tell you a little bit about how the amplification works. The weak electrical pulses powered by the radio waves flow through this part of the circuit. Whenever a pulse passes from the emitter to the base of the transistor, that allows a much stronger pulse to flow from the emitter to the collector of the transistor. The strength of this pulse comes from the battery. Some of that also passes through this part of the circuit, which includes our earpiece. And that's how we amplify the weak pulse to produce a stronger pulse, and hence louder sound in the earpiece. The weak flow between the transistor's emitter and base controls a stronger flow between the emitter and the collector. Well, thanks for watching. Check out my YouTube channel, Rimstar Org, for more videos like this. That includes a How to Make a Crystal Radio video I mentioned. Also one on crystal radio troubleshooting and tips. And for something partly related, how to use a power transistor to make a solar cell. A special thanks to Charles Wenzel for his amplifier circuit. A link to his website is in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, or leave a question or a comment below. See you in a bit.